How's it going, everyone? Glad to be here at the Charter Summit, and uh, glad to be enabling all of you to do what I do with Lex Heat. Uh, there's many reasons to play Lex Heat, and uh, some of the reasons and use cases I'll be touching on today are those uh, separating different types of application environments, be it demo, testing, staging, to production, or what have you. Um, I think there's uh, a high value to the way that Juju can be used to orchestrate applications in different environments for different use cases, but have it be the same application and get the same result no matter how you provision it. So uh, what I'd like to go over are basically a few LaxD deploys on AWS, and then turn around and deploy the same application I've deployed on LexD on AWS onto instances on AWS. And then possibly a mixture of the two. And so uh, to get right into things, I have a uh, publicly accessible presentation at present.creativedrive.com. Um, so what what does this domain name represent? This represents a LexD container sitting on an instance in AWS that has my presentation application deployed to it. And so uh, this is, I, I would like to use this as an introduction because it's a presentation is a very, it could be a very simple static HTML file being served. And at, a, at an application's most basic level, I think that uh, this is a, kind of a good place to start. So, um, you can find this presentation on my GitHub page, and you can also find the charm used to deploy this presentation on my GitHub page as well. You can find associated materials at jujucharms.com, and of course, the forgotten Juju Docs link. Uh, about me, I'm a cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, uh, sysadmin, basically anything you can hack and uh, deploy and configure. So, uh, I was funded by VMware in 2013 to build the first 24 terabyte SSD RAID, and I just uh, pride myself in the, uh, my membership in the open source community and making contributions to the things I care about, like Juju. Charms. Um, so, the beginning, I guess we can kind of skip all this. I cut my teeth on ESXi stacks back in the day and kind of fumbled around uh, with different, experimenting with different forms of what would be DevOps, what would become DevOps in the future. And, uh, you know, I, I realized that it, at a, a younger age, years ago, that there would have to be a different way to go about, and a better way to go about provisioning uh, machines and stacks of applications on cloud substrates. And I, I think I basically went through, went through the thick of it um, trying to find the tool that would, would help me do what I accomplished, what I needed to do, and would really suit my end use case. And uh, so around the, I guess, maybe the dawn of the era of DevOps, which I reference as when OpenStack was released to the public, I think. And uh, around that time, I, I really started digging into my tooling because I, of course, at that time, was getting into OpenStack as well. And, and, and then I found Juju. And uh, Juju really pulled through, to me, pulled through for me in uh, deploying OpenStack and, and clouds in general where a lot of the other technologies uh, fell short. So uh, maybe four, four to five years ago, I, I realized that this technology was what would enable me to do what I was going to need to do for the next X amount of years of my life. Um, uh, I, I also saw something very dramatic, uh, very, something that really hit home to me about the Juju community and I could just tell that they cared about DevOps and they cared about making this tooling fit the use case that would be on 
our, our major use cases in the coming years. And uh, there's really a lot of technologies out there, but few of them are thinking ahead and, and thinking about the use case and, and actually modeling our environments like Jupyter is. So, with little ado, uh, yeah, so uh, from OpenStack to Big Data Stacks to web applications, Jupyter is a great tool to use to be able to extract from config management and be able to model complex environments and a way that's replicable, replicable across heterogeneous providers. And so that's a little bit of what we'll get into today. So uh, we want environment life cycle. We want built-ins like service discovery and leader election. These are things that would, would cost us a great deal to implement if we had to implement the bare bones systems that would facilitate uh, these types of operations outside of Juju. Like Juju really kind of makes you not even notice that those things are there while also putting them at your fingertips. Uh, so to get on with things, I want to talk a little bit about local Lex D deploys, and I thought I would touch on a few important uh, concepts that are in the surrounding domain. So as a lot of you may know, uh, this, having ZFS provisioned on a machine is a very important piece of LexD. Uh, having a local app cache is very important if you're going to be deploying lots of uh, uh, multiple applications and, and software that could possibly be using the same packaging. You don't want to be reaching out to the public internet for that all the time. And a reverse proxy such that you can get to your containers that live on a private subnet on, on a, that live on a private host network of a private subnet behind some firewall somewhere. So uh, these are three of the things that I will touch on as we get into the uh, meat of the presentation. Okay, so before I even, before we would even want to bootstrap Juju on a local XD provider, there's a few things we're going to want to take care of. Uh, first is that we have a CFS pool to provision XD on. And uh, as you can see here, I have this CFS pool appropriately titled XD. And as we can see here, we have uh, C walls that have been created for each of our containers that have been provisioned on our ZFS XD backend. Uh, so just a little bit of background into the ZFS portion of LXD. So uh, with a simple LXC list, we can see what running containers we have on this machine. <coughs> and I just happen to be logged into any instance. On, this happens to be an instance on Amazon. And AWS instance, but uh, it could be your laptop or, or any machine or any Xenio. So, uh, yeah, so our app cache, I basically will configure this to listen on port 3412 and uh, it set a few parameters after installing app engine cache or whatever package caching utility you prefer. And then when I configure Juju, I set a Juju model config to point at my app cacher. <coughs> As we can see here, I can list the configs for my current Juju model, and we see here my app HTTP proxy. So, okay, so on this instance, I have the group of models for our XD provider, and we can view those with Juju models. And uh, my current model, as you can see, is indicated by the, the green highlighting and the asterisk, is PRM test. So I'll just show that it, PRM is a web application I've been recently working on getting charmed at. And so uh, it's, it's the one I chose to use as, as an example today. And if we look here, this is a full deploy of my web application on Lexi containers. 
on my AWS instance. So we now have our app cacher deployed, and we have our Juju model configured to use that app cacher. And now, as you can see, I have a, a bunch of Juju deployed LexD containers on my local LexD provider in my PRM test model. Uh, so I see one of these must be the front end, and hopefully it's PRM web. And see it has open ports on 80 and 443. Well, I want to access PRM web in this host only network in my private subnet in AWS. And so I'm going to take this IP address and just this container IP and just proxy to it from my host machine. And <coughs> A port or domain-based routing is a great way to access your containers. This can be accomplished by means of your choosing. Generally, I find the Nginx or HA proxy to be sufficient. So we'll go ahead and edit our uh, HA proxy config. So as you can see, I'm already binding to port 80, and I'm using HA proxy to forward requests coming in on port 80 to a backend called present. And this is how you're able to see my presentation that also lives on a LexD container on this host. Well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to model this same setup, except I'm going to use a different port other than port 80 for my web application that's also running the best computers. So now anything coming in on, well, maybe we should make that a little bit more of a problem. On 9001, will be routed to my PRM backend. My PRM web backend. Okay. So we'll go ahead and then forward to PRM web on the 245. And I'll forward to port 80. And I guess then I'm going to also bind to 9001. So a few simple rules. And ensure I have my uh, port open on my firewall to field request in 9001.
that said, we should now be able to access our PRM web application running on our container at the IP of the host that is running. Looks like our own small ear of my bundle. And uh, I, at this point, we can basically move on to looking at uh, moving past LXD to basically to not have to work through whatever error I'm having in front of me all this time. But uh, we'll now move on to looking at deploying this application on AWS the same way that it's deployed here in uh, LXD containers. So, I now from the same Juju client can access different cloud substrates by accessing different controllers that are on them. And so as we can see here, I've been working on my LexD dev test controller that's on my local host to this machine. But now I'm going to switch controllers to my Charmer Sun controller. which is an AWS control. So now, if you can see the text, our cloud has changed from local XD to AWS US East 4. Controller has changed and our model has changed. 
so has the underlying substrate. But what's important about this is that this is the same web application we were just deploying on LexD containers, now deployed to actual AWS instances. And at, at this point, let's, we could uh, go back to the presentation notes. Okay, so uh, over what we just after what we just covered, you can see that we have we can have uh, isolation between our testing environments, different types of environments using LexD containers, and then we can turn around and deploy our, our same Jupyter <coughs> bundle on a different provider and and scale it or or use it to whatever production purposes it's intended to be used for or, or production scale it's intended scale to uh, and so that's this is what I'm showing you right now is a, a perfect example of that we just saw this app deployed on XD and now here it is on AWS deployed with a, a very similar bundle so uh, well now I've got my application running on AWS and I want to scale it so I can add units any service in my application stack and, and have this application scale in real time and uh, use the resources that I want it to use when it scales so I can specify my units to scale to a certain region or a certain network space or a scale to uh, instances of different sizes even. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just scale these instances of the network space and the size that they are. And so with that one command, we can see two more instances have spawned, which will have Elasticsearch installed onto them and join the Elasticsearch cluster. These will then be available to my application at, at the time that they are actually available and my application will know about that so uh, scaling up and down using Juju reduces the amount of downtime and uh, manual operations significantly uh, down to one command is something that you don't even really have to worry about or pay attention to afterwards uh, of course minus watching your load on your machines uh, so with this said now I have my application deployed in the production E scale and environment, and uh, maybe I want to now add monitoring to this application. Um, well, before I go there, let's touch on a few more things. Okay, so we've looked at the test environment that could just be one instance of a, a, a web server one Elasticsearch, one Worker, one Redis, one Postgres. We've seen that running on LexD. And then we can, we've also now seen a, a more complex environment. Not this exact uh, architecture in particular, but more complex altogether. Um, and so that if I wanted to, and if we wanted to, if we had time to play around, we could then scale this application to, to meet the demands of, of the use case of our clients and our customers. And uh, <coughs> this would be done no differently than, than it's deployed and provisioned by developers who need to test different branches of code they're working on in a, in a local environment or testing environment. So, Consistency across environment deploys is really important. It's hard to find that in the, uh, in the tooling that we use today and become very comfortable with standing up certain environments for development or CI using some tools. And then those tools don't all, always play out when you want to take them to production. Uh, and it often creates a lot of technical debt, actually, using 
trying to take a tool like Docker from CI or staging to a production deployment, uh, there's just a lot of, of manual operations and a lot of heavy lifting that has to be done from environment to environment, uh, specifically due to things like surface discovery and leader uh, election. I mean, Docker is it, not really an orchestration tool. It, it doesn't really have the concepts of these things that are, are very important to DevOps in general. Um, so, with that said, we can see my web application is now probably almost available or available on AWS at this IP address. So, <coughs> let's visit it. switch my model context to a different model and so my networking context is also changed because it's uh, model sensitive and so here you can see I have a different subnet and attached to a different Juju networking space um, so this this can be really handy and is really it can really help aid in the hardening of your applications if you're provisioning multiple applications for multiple clients, uh, different clients, and, and even the same client within the same VPC, you're going to want to do something to separate uh, the address spaces. So uh, Juju subnets and Juju spaces make it very easy to define the spaces or subnets that you want certain applications or environments to live in and follow in which deploy the applications to those, to those network spaces. And so if we are to maybe just look at this bundle that failed me momentarily moments ago, you can see here in my Juju bundle, under where I list my machines, I specify a spaces constraint that tells the machine to deploy to this network space. And uh, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, these types of operations are also, also entail a lot of manual lifting 
and uh, a lot of manual operations to just get things to work in the right network space uh, through, through not using it, an interface to that, like so something like Juju. Um, so with that said, um, network spaces was, was something that was really important that I touched on, and uh, <coughs> XT deploys.